Hello, welcome to our new video on how to play Sudoku. This is part of an ongoing series of instructional lessons on how to use different Sudoku techniques to solve Sudoku puzzles faster, more efficiently, and have more fun with this fascinating game of Sudoku. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a slightly more advanced technique for solving Sudoku puzzles. Uh, it was discussed in a previous video as well, but this is a, a, a good one to you know to show a few different examples of, and it's how to solve Sudoku puzzles from multiple directions. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the not very concise way of describing the technique, but it's the, it's it's how I like to describe it as uh, getting to the point where you have enough vision of the Sudoku grid where you can see and eliminate possibilities from multiple angles from multiple directions by getting information from not just the row or column that you're in, um, but from other rows and columns that feed into that row or column and other squares that feed into that space. And basically it, it kind of gives you a broader awareness of the patterns and possibilities for how you can eliminate uh, certain numbers from certain spaces. For example, eliminating multiple numbers uh, at once from the same space or um, you know, depending on how the spaces line up, you can el eliminate multiple spaces at once as having uh, a number in them, and that makes it easier. Basically, this technique makes it faster to solve Sudoku puzzles. Uh, instead of having to, like, count through all the numbers 1 through 9 and, you know, count on your fingers or you know, try and figure out, like, okay, which numbers are we missing, or having to rely on simple techniques and, and you know, the most basic uh, logical processes, it, once you can develop a better vision of the grid and recognize what you're seeing and recognize the possibilities, it's a lot faster way of solving Sudoku puzzles because you just know, uh, you know, by deductive reasoning, if you can eliminate numbers from a certain space, you know where that, that other number needs to go next. And it basically just it makes it faster and easier and more efficient, and it helps you build momentum to solve the Sudoku puzzle faster. So it's kind of a long-winded explanation, but these techniques are not always easy to describe succinctly. So with that in mind, let's work through a Sudoku puzzle and see if we can find some examples of this multiple directional problem solving technique uh, and put it to use. Uh, I'm going to just look at these top three squares for starters and see what I can see. Um, let's see. Okay, this upper left square, um, I know that I'm looking, for, I'm looking at these number ones. There are two number ones here, which means that these top five spaces can be eliminated. And then there's also a one in the center column. So very quickly, just by looking from these two directions, looking to the right and looking down below, I all of a sudden can eliminate one, two, three, four, five, six of these blank spaces and the one has to go there. So that's kind of a simple example, but it, it kind of works. You know, it's like if you can very quickly scan the grid and see multiple directions at once, like, oh, there's a one in that center column, so that center column is all clear, and then there's a one in the top two rows. So wow, all of a sudden I've eliminated all of these spaces and the one has to go there. That's an example of multiple direction problem solving. Uh, so there's one right off the bat. Sometimes a good place to look is, um, a good place to look for this technique is if you can look in a row or a column that has four, that has three or four blank spaces. Uh, once you've gotten you know a few numbers in place, it's easier to use this technique because you you kind of have to you know you have to have something to start from, right? You have to have a, a foothold before you can climb the mountain, so to speak. And so, for example, with this one, this row right here that starts with seven and one and nine, we know that we've already placed one and two. A and seven, eight, and nine. So we're missing three, four, five, and six. Three, four, five, and six could go in these uh, four spaces. And basically, what we're trying to figure out is can we eliminate any of these? Uh, can we eliminate any of these numbers from any of these spaces? Right in, over here in this square, we see there's a three in this square. So that means that these two spaces uh, are eliminated for three. We know we can't have a 3 in any of those spaces. But it doesn't really give us any other information that's terribly useful. If there was also 
a 6 in this column, for example, or even better, a 4 and a 6 in this column, we would be able to eliminate three numbers for one space at a time. But we can't do that right now because we don't have enough information. Uh, so let's keep scanning around a little bit. Um, let's see. Let's see, I, th I see a 3 right here. And I see a 3 in this column. So there's a 3 in this left column and a 3 in the right column. Uh, so very quickly we can eliminate those four spaces. And then, look at this, there's a 3 in the bottom row, so the 3s are eliminated there as well. All of a sudden, just by looking from two different directions, we very quickly eliminated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces, and the 3 has to go in the center. So that was helpful. Let's look around a little bit more. Let's look down in these bottom three squares. Let's look at this top row. There's three empty spaces here. We know that we are missing. Uh, we already have the numbers 1, 2, 3, uh, 7, 8, and 9 in place. So that means we're missing 4, 5, and 6. Missing 4, 5, and 6. Um, and oh, well, here we go. If we look within this square, there's a 4. So the 4 cannot be there. And if we look above, within the same column, there's a 5. So the 5 cannot be there. So we've eliminated two of the three numbers from this space. So the only remaining number is 6. And that leaves us with a 4 and a 5 um, for these two remaining spaces. But I don't have any, any further insights into that at the moment. So let's keep looking around. Let's just keep seeing what we can see. I see a 2 in this right column. I see a 2 in this bottom row. That eliminates two bases and we know that the the two has to go there. Let's see if we can finish our work in this bottom right square. We've got a one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, so we're missing a five and an eight. There's an eight in this middle row, so that leaves us with a five and an eight. Um, let's see, what does that leave us with in this bottom set of squares, middle row? There's two empty spaces, one, two, and then we need a three and a four. And here's a 3 right there in that same column, so that means the 4 goes here and the 3 goes here. Let's look at this bottom square. We're missing a 1 and a 5. And we can see here in this column that there's a 1. So that means it must be a 5, that must be a 1. Process of elimination, very simple. We have one space remaining here and it's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that must be a 4. There's two spaces left in this lower left square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are missing. Currently, we don't have any more information to shed light on that one. Um, Let's look back at this top row here. We've got a 1, a 2, a 4, a 6, and a 7. So we know we're missing 3, 5, 8, and 9. So 3, 5, 8, and 9. Some combination are going to fill these four squares. And all right, here's an example. Here's an example of this technique. I just happened to spot this, OK? We know this space right here, this yellow highlighted space, must contain a 3, a 5, an 8, or a 9. Four possible numbers that can go here. Here's an 8 and a 9 in the same square. So we know it can't be 8 or 9. So that means it must be 3 or 5. There's a 3 in the same column. So that means it can't be 3. So that means it must be 5. You see how we just eliminated three of the four numbers from that one space? That's an example of looking in multiple directions, uh, eliminating multiple numbers at once, however you want to describe it. Um, that's how you can quickly make progress in Sudoku, is when you can get clues from multiple directions, get clues from multiple places. So there's a 5. What are we left with in this row? Let's focus in on this row. We still need to find a 3, an 8, and a 9. Uh, let's see, here's another example. We, we're looking for a 3, an 8, and a 9. Right in the same column, we already have a 3 and an 8, so that means that space must be 9. Now we need a 3 and an 8. And look, right we're smack in the middle of the same square, we have a 3, so that one's got to be 8. And we have an 8, so that one's got to be 3. Very quickly, we solved that row, and we started it by looking for multiple directions. And we, we had that one square that we were able to eliminate a few different numbers uh, all at once. Let's look in this left center square. We need to find a 1, a 6, and a 7. Here's a good example. Uh, we've got a 1 and a 7 in the same column, so that means that space, the yellow space, must be 6. 
Now we need a one and a seven. We've got a one in the center row. That must be a, sorry, row in the, one in the center column. So that must be a seven. And then the only one remaining number is one. So that worked out fairly well. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have? We need to uh, we need to find a one for the center square. Uh, I see a one in the top row and a one in the bottom row, and so the one's got to be in one of these two spaces. But there's already a one in the column, so that means the one goes right there. You can see we looked to a few different directions at once to do that. Uh, we're in this center square. We're missing one, two, three, four, five, and nine. Five and nine are the two numbers that are missing. There's a nine in that column, so that's a five. There's a five in that row, so that's a nine. Only one number remaining over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight goes there. And now there's three spaces remaining in this square. One, two, three. It should be four, six, and seven. Um, I see four and six there. So there's that's going to be seven. Oh, and look. <laughs> Actually, that was, that was a pretty simple one. I could have just uh, filled in the seven. But see, here's, that, here's an example. It was actually quicker for me. Like I didn't realize that there was only one space left in that column, so it was actually quicker for me just by having broader vision of the board to figure out, you know, um, that there were already a four and six in place, and so we, we we were just missing a seven in that square. Sometimes it's quicker to solve it for solve a space for the square it's in than for the column it's in. See how, see how I mean? Like you can solve a space as part of the square that it's in, or as part of the row that it's in, and sometimes the clues open up and you know become recognizable in your mind quicker than others. Two more spaces left in this square. We have one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. So we're missing a four and a six. And I can't do anything about that right now because that's all the information I've got. Um, let's look at this row right here. Four empty spaces starting with seven. We know that there's a three, four, five, and six that we're trying to find. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to, fit, to solve this row right at the moment. So, so let's just let's just look around a little bit. Um, what else am I looking at here? I've got a column right here. One, two, three, four. I need a five and a nine in this column. There's a nine there, so that means the five goes there, and that means the nine goes there. Um, now I can finish off this square. Three, four, five, six. That's in that spot. Let's look at this vertical column. One, two, three, five. I need a four and a six up here. There's a six right there. So four and six. And then one, two. I'm looking at this square right here. One, two, four, six, seven, nine. There should be a three, a five, and an eight. Three, a five, and an eight uh, that go here but I can't figure out which is which, not right at the moment. Um, let's look at this top row. I've got a one, two, four, six, eight, nine. So that means I'm missing three, five, and seven. Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, this one needs to be a three, a five, or a seven. There's already a three and five here in the same column, so that means that's a seven. These remaining two spaces need to be three and five. There's a five in this column, so that one's a three, which leaves us with five. Um, let's take another look at this upper right square. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. I'm missing four, five, and six. Um, four, five, and six is all I'm missing right now. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at this right column. One, two, three, four, and six. Should be a four and a six in these two squares, but I can't figure out which one is which, not at the moment. Um, let's look at this center row right here. One, two, three. I'm missing a four, five, seven, eight. Um, we know that there's there can't be an eight here, and there can't be an eight here. Because there's an sorry, there's an eight in that square, so there's an, can't that can't be eight, and that can't be eight, so this has to be eight, and that means by process of elimination, that has to be three, and that what does that leave us with? I was looking at this center row right here, so one, two, three, 
I still need four, five, seven. There's a seven in this square, so the seven can't be there. There's a seven right there, so the seven has to be here. And now I need a four and a five. Here's a four, so that must be five, and that must be four. Simple process of elimination. One, two, three, four. There's two squares left here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a five here, so the five has to be here, leaving us with six. And all of a sudden, we're done. We just have to fill in these last two spots. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four. Number four goes there, and we solved it, and we're done. And you see how the momentum can build very quickly if you're able to apply this broader vision to the grid, spot opportunities, recognize possibilities coming from multiple directions, and eliminate multiple numbers at once in each space in a given situation. Um, this technique is really helpful when you recognize the chance to use it. The chances don't always materialize when you need them, um, but when you spot these opportunities, it's really satisfying because it just feels like something clicks into place in your head. You feel the sense of a puzzle piece snapping into place because you're like, aha, that space cannot contain number three or number five or number nine because I know this. And you can point to that and you build from these uh, from these clues. Sometimes you can, you can uh, establish a foundation that's going to carry you through the rest of the game. So... That's one of the things that makes Sudoku so exciting. You never know where the puzzle is going to break wide open. And any move you make can potentially teach you what you need to know about the puzzle to, to bust the whole thing open and make big progress and get toward your goal. So I hope this technique has been helpful for you. Thank you for listening. Enjoy playing Sudoku. Thank you. Thank you.